We are in Acts chapter 1, and we're doing verses 15 through 26, which is the end of the chapter. And before I ask Terry to read that, I need some readers. Um, who can read some scriptures? Okay, Mindy, Sid, Kevin. Um, Sid, would you get Joshua 18, 8 through 10? Um, Kevin, would you get Jonah 1, 4 through 7? Um, Sister Douglas, would you get Judges 20, 8 and 9? Um, Mindy, would you get Luke 1, 8 and 9? Uh, Kaina, would you get Romans 12, 1 and 2? Um, who else can read? Diane, can you read? Um, Ephesians 5 and 17. I have some more, but we'll start there. Um, Terry, would you read chapter 1? In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120, and said, Brothers and sisters, the scripture had to be fulfilled in which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through David concerning Judas, who served as guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in our ministry. With the payment he received for his wickedness, Judas bought a field, and there he fell headlong. His body burst open, and all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so they called that field in their language Akeldama, which is field of blood. For said Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms, May this place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it, and may another take his place of leadership. Therefore, it's necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus was living among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. And so they nominated two men, Joseph, called the Bar Sabbath, also known as Justus, and Matthias. And then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry which Judas left to go where he belongs. And then they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias. And so he was added to the eleven apostles. Okay. Does anyone want to talk about what they're seeing in here? That's the vision. He knew what was going to happen with Judas. Mm -hmm. He already had Matthias picked out. Right. I also like the way that they found, the way they decided on <clears throat> between the two of them. Yeah. Did God do that? Yes. Did he? Did he? <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the questions for tonight and why you guys have some scriptures. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> um, okay, well, let's talk about the casting lots. Um, casting lots was mentioned 47 times in the Bible. Um, usually as a means of determining God's will or on the part of the heathen, God's, G-O-D-S. Yeah. You know, like, um, Kevin has an example of that. Um, so, <clears throat> in, uh, I'm not sure I didn't give it to somebody. Um, in Leviticus, 16 and 8, God commanded Moses 
And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord, the other lot for the scapegoat. And in Proverbs 16.33, the lot is cast into the lap, but it's every decision is from the Lord. Thank you. And in Proverbs 18.18, 18, casting lots causes contentions to cease and keeps the mighty apart. Amen. No one really knows for sure how they did this casting of lots. Apparently it was so common that everybody already knew. Um, they're saying possibly marked stones, don't know if it was numbers or names or words, were put into a container and, and shaken until something fell out, so it was cast out of the container, which could be why it was called casting lots. Um, it's not like gambling, which is usually for money or for some sort of gain. Um, it was used to seek divine direction. Um, the Hebrew word for lots is goral, G-O-R-A-L, and it means small stones cast to produce a decision. So, um, who has Joshua 18, 8 and 10? Is that you? This is casting lots for an inheritance. Okay, uh, what verses again? 18 verses 8 through 10. 8 through 10. Joshua. All right. As the men started on their way to map out the land, Joshua instructed them, Go and make a survey of the land and write a description of it. Then return to me, and I will cast lots for you here at Shiloh in the presence of the Lord. So the men left, went through the land. How far was that? Um, eight through ten. So the men left and went through the land. They wrote its description on a scroll, town by town, in seven parts, and returned to Joshua in the camp at Shiloh. Joshua then cast lots for them in Shiloh in the presence of the Lord, and there he distributed the land to the Israelites according to their tribal division. So that was for the Israelites each tribe, lots were cast so that Joshua wasn't the one making the decision for who was going to get the best part or how right. to have the water running through it or whatever. Um, Kevin, would you read Jonah 1, 4 through 7? This was done by heathens, we believe, who are trying to find out who is responsible for the trouble with the the, the winds and the waves and their, their boat about to capsize. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid, and cried every man unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea, to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, what meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, and so be that God will think upon us, that we perish not. And they said, Every one to his fellow, Come and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. <laughs> um, all right. It was also used for strategy and war. Judges 28 and 9. Oh, I might have forgotten that one. What was that, the priestly duty? And all the people arose as one man, saying, We will not any of us go to his tent, neither will we any of us turn into his house. But now this shall be the thing which we shall go to Gibeah. We will go up by lot against it. Um, remember, it's, it's in there like 47 times, so some things are repeats. Um, Mindy, do you have Luke 1, 8 and 9? Mm -hmm. um, this is about 
<clears throat> drawing, ca casting lots for the priestly duties. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole mul uh, sorry, never mind, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's hard to stop. Uh, yesterday when I was talking with Karen, we were discussing tonight's Bible lesson and we were talking about the casting of lots. And she mentioned that they cast lots for Jesus' garments. Mm -hmm. We just recently saw that when we were getting yeah. towards the end of Mark. Um, sure and did. it's in a few other places. Um, so Deb, so if we would, if we could agree that from the culture and from the custom that it was not considered abnormal to cast lots. Right. My question is, did they did they err when they gave God two choices? Yes. That's part right. of this discussion. Yeah. Yes. Um, Good point. The distinction between this kind of decision making is you have the casting of lots up until the day of Pentecost. Right. That's and exactly then it's what I was going to say. Mentioned again. again. Right. 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 Um, because now you have an in, inward right. witness, yes. um, which, uh, would you read Romans yeah. 12, 1 through 2? Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you will be able to test and approve what, is God, what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Um, did I give Ephesians 5 to anyone? Yes. Okay. I thought I might have given it to you, but I wasn't sure which of two that I gave you. <laughs> Would you read that one, please? 517. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Okay. And um, John 16 and 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come... He will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Mm. So that's the difference between the, you know, the Old Testament, the way things had always been done. Um, we have a pastor who, when she became pastor, started turning like everything upside down. <laughs> Um, she couldn't find it in the scriptures. Like, why are we doing this? Um, and the way that God changed it to, so to answer the question, I don't believe we're supposed to cast lots. Um, right, the high priest had a, a set of dice. <laughs> I mean, the, kind the, of. Or Urim and Athum, and that was part of the Old Testament. That, that was part of the, old, the right. old way of doing things. But Bridget brought up giving God two choices. I think that's where they did. Yeah. yeah. Um, two choices in disciples, and um, that brings up something else. Um, okay, I need some readers again. Um, Kevin? John had something. John, you got yeah. something? Okay. We see where they're actually praying for the results. Mm -hmm. And they're praying with expectations because God chose the first 12 with certainty, they knew the lot was going to be satisfactory to what God expected. Well, there could be some debate on that. Um, Kevin, would you read 1 Corinthians 15, 8 through 9? Um, Sister Douglas, would you read Ephesians 3, 1 through 5? And Ephesians 2, 19 through 22? Because you're going to be right there. Um, Mandy, would you read Galatians 1, 11 and 12? Um, two choices. But did God have somebody else in mind? Well, from Corinthians, you will make you wonder. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes yeah. the Lord answers our prayers. 
Now, and I hate to say to teach us a lesson, but we learn mm, yeah. from sometimes praying the mess. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Kevin, 1 Corinthians 15, 8 through 9, please. And the last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. Okay. Paul was an apostle, born out of due season. God said that someday the whole nation of Israel was going to worship mm -hmm. Jesus. But Paul had something to do, and Jesus actually called him out of season, out of the season for all of the other Israelites that didn't believe in Jesus. He was called sort of ahead of time. Um, Sister Douglas. Ephesians 3, 1 through 5. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you word, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets, by the Spirit. Mm. So, Paul wrote a big chunk of the, what we call the New Testament. And he calls himself an apostle. Um, Ephesians 2, 19 through 22. Now therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. How far? Uh, 19 through 22. In whom all the building fitly framed together grows to an holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Mm. Amen. And maybe Galatians 1, 11 through 12. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So the disciples don't seem like they're off by saying it should be somebody who's been with us, who's walked with us and who's seen the miracles and and yet we don't and, and God you know a, a choice was made because they gave him two choices but and it says the bishopric let another take so kind of wonder if it was supposed to have been Paul and God let them vote between Matthias and Joseph and said, okay, but I still have another plan. Yeah. Um, so, but then at that point, though, Paul wasn't in the right place, right? He wasn't in the right place. Right. He was still persecuting. Yeah. yeah, he was still persecuting the church. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah, so yeah. So maybe he allowed that while he was still formulating what should happen with Paul, you know, giving Paul the chance. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't say when his bishopric needed to be given to someone right. else or be taken by someone right. else. So, you know, you notice that after that point in time, they don't ever cast lots again. <laughs> well, I, I notice that sometimes people feel like they just got to do something. Right. Yeah, we get in trouble for that, don't we? Yeah. Um, two things. One, it's not one, if Brother Douglas were here, I know. The one of the things that he and I have never agreed on is he thinks that there was twelve apostles and that was it. But I have pointed out to him yes. that later in the epistles there's several times when Paul calls Barnabas and yep. Silas um, 
apostles. Mm -hmm. So there was more than the 12 apostles. Right. Mm -hmm. But something that I found real interesting, that scripture that you had me read in Ephesians, in whom all the building fitly framed together mm -hmm. grows to a holy temple in the Lord. Okay, mm -hmm. talking about the holy temple. And we know that the old temple was a type and shadow of what we are today. The old temple is a type and shadow of the mm -hmm. heavenly temple, but we are the temple of God. Right. Okay? And one of the interesting things that I came across in studying that in the last few days is was in Exodus chapter 36, there was 11, not 12, 11 curtains made as a covering. And I found that very interesting. That is interesting. You know, I know that when it talks about the New Jerusalem, that there's... You know, it talks about the 12 yes. foundations, right. you know, and the, the 12 apostles right. named after the 12. You wonder who is that 12th apostle that is named there. Is it Paul? Mm -hmm. But um, I found that interesting yeah. that there was 11 curtains as a covering. Well, yeah. Huh? Um, you mean it was a church? So you wonder if that clock was on. So, or, or could it have been the bride? I think the whole temple itself is a type and shadow of the church. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole temple. So that's we don't quite have enough in information to really you know know what happened here. We do know that they didn't cast lots again, mm -hmm. and the rest of the New Testament shows us that you know they they learned to trust the spirit that was w within them. So this is the transitionary time, and they fell back on the old way of doing things. And so you got to get the impression that God did, did some talking to a few folks after this and said, okay, I'll let you do it this time, but this is it. You're, you're doing this wrong. You're not going to, you know, don't be hitting the rock when I tell you not to, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Right. It, it's, uh, and so I think, you know, the whole Paul thing, some of that may have come about just so God could show people, look, this is apostle out of due season and end. You don't set the number of apostles. I did that, and so let's not be playing games. Listen to what I'm telling you to do and forget about the dice. You could also infer from it that without the infilling of the Holy Ghost, you might as well flip a coin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you don't have the infilling of the Holy Ghost to lead and guide you, right. then you might as well, yeah. right? Sure. And the Holy Ghost had to follow you. And they did not replace James. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true, because it wasn't very long. Mm -hmm. um, something else that I found interesting, just, you know, um, this little guy, Justice, <laughs> who was rejected, mm. you know, he could have walked away and said, well, I wasn't chosen. You know, but... There's a couple of places where a justice is mentioned that is with Paul. I don't know if it's the same one. They don't know. You know, the scholars don't know. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I, I, I would like to think that sometimes when we are denied what we want, mm. you know, I want that position. I want to do that. And God says no. Mm -hmm. Then we just go on and serve God in whatever way that we can. Yeah. Until he opens the door because his anointing will make a way for you. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, whatever place he wants you to be. We serve when, when there's an opening and Stephen was given an opening to help wait on tables for the for the old older folks, you know, and and he went beyond that. He he was preaching also and he got in trouble, he got stoned for it. Yeah. But it doesn't matter what people say. It matters what you hear God telling you to do. And when God's telling you to, okay, wait on tables, but do some preaching also, well, you better start preaching and waiting on tables, you know? Yeah, sort of like Philip was up in the desert, desert baptizing somebody. Right. Yeah. Sid? Well, it just occurred to me, I don't know if we answered it or not, but uh, 
uh, uh, these two that they picked, was that just by chance also that these two names, uh, I, you know, I don't see anything of Matthias. I mean, he was an apostle. He never shows up never again. Yeah. again. Uh, I, I think this whole thing with Peter, uh, he's impetuous. He's <laughs> always been impetuous. And I think at the prayer meeting, he's like some people when you're trying to pray and everything, they get nervous, you know, something, we got to <laughs> yes. do something. I mean, everybody's right. quiet, whatever. <laughs> but I really believe, uh, it, now this is my belief, I have no proof text for you. But I will say, Peter was guilty of that a lot of times, jumping out the front. I think he just jumped out the front, it's my opinion. And let's and that was a custom, and that's the way we do things. You got all the scriptures. That's the way they did things back then, and we do it today. Let's do that because we need one more, yeah. and we need him now. Right. We can't wait. Why uh, can't we? Yeah. we got to fill a gap. Right. And so that's Maybe. I, I, I think the whole thing was Peter, and I think once again, we all got opinions. That's my opinion. That Peter just jumped the gun. There is one. There is one thing, though, that because I I tend to agree with you. I, I, there is just one thing that kind of is I don't know, like an itch. And just bear with me for a second. But there's going to be just in a couple chapters, all of these very learned religious people that are gobsmacked by the scripture understanding and knowledge that's coming out of these fishermen. Right. Of which oh, Peter yeah. was one. Oh yeah. Oh, Don't yeah. you find it a little interesting that this ignorant, and I mean that in the literal sense, ignorant fisherman, is at a prayer meeting. They've been there for, you know, days because it says, and in those days, Peter stood up, and this ignorant fisherman is like, you know, in the book of Psalms. It refers to what happened. You understand that Judas walked with them for years along with some of the people that were in that prayer meeting. They just lost a loved one whether they got along all the time or not. Judas was one of them. And he stands up and the first thing that he says is, this is what happened to Judas. And it was pretty awful. Yeah. You know. And he harkens back to a specific scripture. Again, this is an ignorant fisherman who harkens back to a specific scripture and ties it to the betrayer of Christ. Don't don't you think that's a little bit interesting? We know Jesus was in the temple <laughs> yeah. yes. because it said, as was his custom. And they went with him, and every single week, something from the first five books was read and probably commented on. Mm -hmm. So within a year's time, if you attended temple, you heard all of that. And then they also would read some of the, what they called the writings, the, the prophets. Um, so they didn't have all the distractions we have. They didn't have TV and lots of books around and... So their memories probably were a lot better on for things sure. they heard oh, for sure, yeah. because of that. Yeah. So they, but they had to be there to hear it. I just thought of something else about Peter. I like Peter. So I do too. I just, we're talking about Peter. Peter, yes, not me. Anyway, uh, he stood up here, interrupted the prayer meeting, and said, we got to get something done about this missing apostle here. Uh, he quotes a couple of scriptures, and so let's take care of it. And just, got, you know, got, got to do this thing. Peter stood up again, I know in chapter 2. Yeah. Mm -hmm. at, right after Pentecost. Yeah. That was the second time Peter stood up. He's in Pentecost. But now, the difference is, what he said when he stood up the second time, Compared to what he said the first time, which was, we got to just pick an apostle, blah, blah, blah. But <laughs> the second time was under the anointing and power of the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. First yeah. time, I guarantee you, was not. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
<laughs> right. That, that, yes. is, that is the courage to be so like yeah. the bad things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if, if we were going to go to suspect sin to avoid, could it be that picking two people that you were comfortable with might not have been one of the best plans right. instead of finding out who God wanted? Yeah. We tend to do that. We mm -hmm. pick people that we're comfortable with. No, no, yeah. we've got a nominating committee. Mm. The nominating committee. <laughs> oh, a committee. And yeah, they, they pick their choices. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can, can I, yeah. On Peter's defense, okay. now they've been, they've been praying there for days. They've been mm -hmm. waiting, and yeah. nothing has happened. Mm -hmm. And so you know they had to be thinking, why has nothing happened? Right. Maybe we need to do Maybe something. Maybe we're supposed to do something. Let's do something religious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So maybe no. we need to, I mean, Judas has fallen. Mm -hmm. He was part of this body. Maybe. That part is broken. Yeah. Maybe we need to replace the brokenness. Right. I, I think if, they, if, their, if their pick had been God's choice, I believe we'd have heard something else about the fire all, all the way through, you know, after. Uh, he doesn't come well, up again. You, did, you know, there was a lot of them, though. Yeah, just didn't hear a lot of Al. Yeah, yeah, I know, but we know more than this guy. I mean, I think he was, I, I think it was just, yeah. you know, we got to have somebody. Here's these two guys. They saw yeah. Jesus. They saw Jesus. They saw the resurrection. Mm -hmm. they, they're qualified. So if they're qualified, let's just do it. But who qualifies them? Mm -hmm. Bridget? <coughs> So I, I know I was the first one to say, well, mm -hmm. they, you were. They, yeah. But so, on the other side of All right. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. God knew their hearts. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. And they didn't just say, you know, they prayed and asked. So they were trying, they were doing the best they could with what they had. Right. 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 Absolutely. But I do think we get in trouble because we limit God based on what we naturally know, feel, think, or see. And he's limitless. I mean, they could have just as easily said, had prayed, Lord, send that person through the door. You know what I mean? But they did because their tradition was and I'm not faulting them for tradition because that's what they knew. That's what they yeah. grew up in. It's, I think this is tantamount to the argument about whether or not you should fleece the Lord. Right. right. You know, I think it's the, sort of the same thing. Gideon's fleece. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and you, you, when you look at in the Old Testament, because this is hearkening back to Old Testament things, yeah. we find Samuel coming to <laughs> Jesse's house. That's right. You know, he didn't cast lots on them. He had every one of them pass before him. And the Lord said, none yet. <laughs> and really and truly, that could have happened here. But like in looking at these folks that were gathered together, and for days they've been praying and waiting for something, and right. they don't know what. Right. And every one of us, if we haven't been there before, we're going to be where we have prayed and sought an answer and we don't even know what we're waiting for. We just know that we're waiting for something, right? I don't, I, I don't think that in the midst of that, I, I just don't think that this makes a hill of beans worth a difference. Right. They, they were supposed to be waiting on God, and they got ahead of God. And, it's, and it doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, but I think we have to remember that Jesus kept saying to Peter, Feed my sheep, feed my sheep. Well, that's good. So Peter knew he was being persuaded to go into a leadership position. And after all that time of waiting, he, mm -hmm. he I'm sure, felt yeah. we've got to get going on this. We've yeah. got to get things straightened out. Right. Continue the ministry. Right. I think he had a sense of urgency. He also had the yeah. keys to the kingdom. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and he specifically <laughs> says... This 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 one needs to be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. He understood the point yeah. in those that have walked with Christ. They're like, hey, we've got to get this message out. We saw him. We saw him die, and we saw him resurrected. 
So that's a really good point, Diane. And there was no dissension. You have men there who mm -hmm. are disciples. You have women there. Mm -hmm. And it says they're all in one accord. You don't mm -hmm. see anybody saying, well, that's not a good idea or right. maybe we should wait. Right. It's a good point about keys of the kingdom that Peter had. You know, God went ahead with this because he did have the keys to the kingdom. And so um, he got away with it because God had already given permission. Right, and, and I think a lot of times people don't. But when people are in leadership, those who are sitting under them have the obligation to be obedient unto them. Right. I, I remember when I was in Akron, the lady who uh, did my hair, she wanted to know why, no jewelry, no this, no that. And and I was raised like none of that to even know blah, blah, blah. And I, and I politely said, well, there's nothing wrong with any of that. But my pastor teaches against that. Therefore, as a sign of obedience, I don't. Mm -hmm. But was it a heaven or hell issue? No. But it was, a, it was an issue of obedience. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes we who are sitting in the sanctuary, it's easy for us to look up and say, well, God didn't say that. Well, maybe he didn't, but that's that person's problem. That really isn't yours. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And he leads us as we're going into leadership or further in our walk. Maybe we won't do it exactly in the mature Christian way, but God, I think, respects where we are, the level yeah. we're at, and lets us go along there, and he'll teach us more as we go along there. Amen. He does. He leads us along into his truth and righteousness, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um. We were talking about whether something matters or not. In Revelation, it talks about the 20 and 4 elders. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of speculation as to who they are. Some people believe that 12 are, you know, the disciples and 12 are, you know, the Old Testament patriarchs. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so some people would look at that and say, oh, well, this one has to be an apostle or a disciple because they're, you know, I don't know. Um, God has that already planned out and figured out. Does anyone else see any sin to avoid in this passage? If not, we'll go on to promises to claim. Do you see promises to claim? He'll answer your prayer. He'll answer your prayer. Mm -hmm. In verse 24, it says, And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knows the heart, hearts of all men. And we can pray on that a lot, a lot of different times. Yeah. You know the heart. You, you know my heart. heart. Yeah. Um, only God. Only God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other promises? How about examples to follow? Pray, pray for pray. sure. Pray. Yes. Pray. And be in one accord. Yeah. Um, we argue over a lot of things that we don't need to be arguing over. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of things. Um, I was thinking there was another example. Um, they knew scripture. Amen. Quoting scripture. And when you look in the next chapter, you're going to see a lot of it in there. Yep. Um, so I know years ago that Sister Douglas was making it a point to memorize scripture. And she's memorized a lot. And I don't know how much she's memorized, but I know she's memorized a lot from different things that she's said over the years since then without looking down and reading it. So. Um, right. So that's a good example to follow. We uh, we did 
witness it firsthand, but by faith we are witnesses of his resurrection. Amen. We're witnesses That's good. of his yeah. resurrection. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're witnesses of different miracles, healings, signs and wonders, mm -hmm. the testimonies of our fellow brothers and sisters. Man's to keep. Peter quoted one of them. Yeah. Okay. Example. We have a decision to make. <clears throat> Always include prayer. Mm -hmm. Always include For prayer. For sure. Yeah. Yes. Does anyone have another example or uh, command to keep? part of the ministry be part of the ministry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in verse 25 that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship and about whoever, whoever the lost those right mm -hmm. lost fell upon, but. but it's really for all of us for sure Sister Douglas mentioned that there are other apostles mentioned that Jesus kept his number to 12. Can you imagine shepherding 12 grown men around who, two of which are called the sons of thunder, <laughs> trying to keep every one of them out of trouble? Oy. Um, so, <laughs> cannot imagine, just can't. Um, but it's not that he said that others, um, what is it? there was contention where, who was it? Was it John saying, you know, these were also trying to do things, and Jesus mm -hmm. said, well, if they're not against us, then they're for us. Mm -hmm. So um, he was not limiting the number of people that could be in the ministry and who could be witnesses and all of that. Um, we sometimes do that. Hopefully not now. Right. He, yeah. I mean, but you could also say that by being the perfect example that Jesus was perhaps showing, although you will have many friends and many more acquaintances, there's really a limited number of people that you're going to be able to share your life with and really pour into. And if the Son of God said 12 is about my max as a human being day in and day out then maybe we should as human beings recognize that that our inner circle really needs to be a small number of people that we really do pour into instead of spreading ourselves so thin across many people and not effectively really pouring into any of them. Mm -hmm. Kind of use the phrase pouring out. You know, I'm thinking, you know, these are people you're praying for that maybe you're calling and checking up on, particularly if you know they have health problems. What other things do you want to add to that? Um, well, I mean, these, essentially with discipleship, you're, you're, it's just like raising a child only in a spiritual sense you're helping them see this is how you confront the the difficult things in life this is how you confront adversity this is how you stand up to those hard choices this is how you pray through these issues this is how you pray through these struggles with your flesh that is really what the epistles you know the letters that Paul wrote it was him giving tools to the churches on this is how you disciple one another. This is how you disciple others. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thankful for those letters. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And, you, know, you know, just doing the long distance thing. It'd be easier if you could sit down at a table with them mm -hmm. and talk. Yeah. You've made technology work for you, but it still would be easier if yeah. you were right there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And just as it is here, 
you know, the ones who are here can have some input and anyone else might be able to put something on the comment section or text Kevin, uh, but that's not being as much a part of it. You're being more of a spectator. Mm -hmm. yeah. So y'all should come. We have good food on Wednesday night. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay. Um, anyone else have another comment? Are we done? Kind of what you can Absolutely. Well, and any comments you yeah. want to add about gambling? Or <laughs> Feel free. Now, I will remind you that this weekend we are having a work day, uh, Saturday from uh, starting at 930, if you can be a part of that, to come and be a part of that. And then uh, <laughs> Saturday night we'll be downtown at Pritchard Park from 6 to 8 p.m. doing Praise in the Park. And announce to the, the broadcast about... This is Children's Church Week. Oh, thank you. Uh, also, this Sunday, um, during during the Word, uh, we will be having Children's Church. So, uh, young folks, come and be a part of that. And a week from this Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, and it's our church anniversary. And we're super excited <laughs> to have Dave and Erica Butler with us um, from Texas. And uh, super excited to get to hang out with them. To, to receive the word from Dave and um, and to have a cookout on the grounds afterwards. So come be with us for that. A week from Friday. Yes, a week from Friday will be BRQ, BRQ. which is the 3rd of June. Right. And the 4th of June, which is a Saturday, there will be a, um, a, a prayer meeting here in the church sanctuary at nine, from 9.30 until 11.00. Um, led by uh, Chaplain Van Vanessa James um, from ABCCM. She does a prayer meeting the first Saturday of every month in, in a different location. And, and uh, the month of June, she will be here with us with some of her prayer team. So anyone who wants to come and be a part of that, please do. It is a very powerful time um, in the Spirit. All right. To put our lesson tonight in perspective, um, Pentecost Sunday is 10 days away. That means that we should roll the it, dice on somebody right now. <laughs> no, just kidding. It said that the Lord, after his passion, showed himself 40 days. Yeah. So this would be Ascension. Right, this would be Ascension Day. So we would all be standing there with our mouths open. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <Scott>. mm -hmm. <laughs> Why stand you here gazing? <laughs> All right, well, let's just take a moment to thank the Lord for this time together. Lord, we're so grateful. Thank you for being in our midst. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the freedom and the liberty to just study your word and discuss it openly and, and to grow from one another. Lord, we ask that you would go with each one of us. Help us, Lord Jesus, to be lights shining into the darkness of this world. We give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.